G'day everyone, welcome back to another fantasy and super coach review video on the channel. Going to be going over my teams for round 19. Uh, hopefully all you lot went well this week. Just five more rounds to go. So if you're uh, absolutely having a shocker season like I am in fantasy, only five rounds left until this carnage is finally over. But if you're going well, hopefully you lot can keep on pushing. But let's start as always with how I went in fantasy. So it's just a downward spiral. Week in, week out, we continue to go down the ranks. But finally... The drought has been broken. We have finally risen up the ranks. Oh, it's a nice feeling. Season possibly still alive at rank 21k. Uh, so I think we moved up about, yeah, 1,000 spots. A pretty good week, and finally we had a good captain's choice. We went with Tim English against the Cats. Just felt logical, really. And, uh, yeah, it was good. How about that win from the Dogs? I thought they were excellent. Uh, and, then we, and then, yeah, we VC'd Merritt's. Um, but, uh, yeah, with the trades we did, we... So we tr so we uh, yeah we brought out Gorn because he was out for another week. I couldn't afford to bloody field or put the E on Kruger again. I needed a ruck. Just went with Cherry because I love watching him this year. He's just so aggressive and um, he's good at ground level too and gets a lot of tackles and uh, yeah he was dominant the first three quarters and slowed down a bit but um, yeah got a bit of points late so he was massive. Yeah really content with that uh, and then we brought in Sean Mudd. I didn't mind paying up for a bit for him. Because uh, just his role looks good, and he gets a lot of tackles, and he got a an 84. So, probably could have went with Zach Taylor, though. Uh, he was the obvious rookie trade in this week. He also got an 80-odd score, so we'll bring him in this week. He's still under 300k. Anyway, so going through the line, so Nick Dacos, just the 87. Um, yeah, he yeah, scoring just hasn't been absolutely huge this year. Um, he, he tried. He, he tried. Um, he was probably one of the, I guess, shining lights for the Pies. I thought he was pretty good with the footy. Um, didn't really make too many mistakes, but uh, yeah, just the 87. Sheezer was class today, 134. Uh, love watching him. Uh, just so smooth and gets into really good positions and uses it so well. Uh, so yeah, been been an awesome watch this year uh, as a neutral. Uh, Nick Martin with the 97, just always push, pushing 90 plus scores week in, week out. So been really consistent, Martin. Dude, it was, uh, I think his kicking's been good the last few weeks. That's definitely helped him a little bit. Can't have the odd turnover or two, but uh Still a good score, fantasy-wise. Young, just really consistent um, with usually around the 90-plus scores each week as well, even though it's a bit of a form dip the last few weeks. His low toll certainly doesn't help him out, but uh, yeah, Freya were awesome day. It was really with the Caleb Sarong show by the looks of it in that midfield. Uh, Trent Rivers, yeah, we, as we said a few weeks ago, brought him in just a bit of a fun pod given our season's over. And uh, yeah, it looks like Demons just really struggled today uh, from the footage that I did watch whilst I was watching the Sydney game. So I didn't watch all of this, but... Yeah, Melbourne just got killed apart in the middle, and I thought defensively they were awful. So, yeah, a bit of a bad score, but um, hoping for a bounce back. And uh, McKercher, yeah, so first week uh, of McKercher playing, I'm pretty sure, with Fisher back in. And um, how did he go? Yeah, still went well. Fisher was pretty poor, though, so could he be dropped? Only the 43. Um, but, yeah, I like watching him. He gives them good run, and I think he's a bit of a better, more, more of a riskier kicker than Fisher, but... You know, he loves to take the game on. And Luke, and no, sorry, excuse me, Logan Evans got a 101, and I couldn't even loop him on because Sean Mack already played. So, yeah, he looks really class, though, Evans. Um, he's still learning the culture with the kicking. Like, he, he likes to really go corridor. Um, you know, Port Adelaide love to really be aggressive with their ball movement. And, yeah, he, he's key to their, to their system, I think, Evans. So, yeah, he's, they've got a good youngster. Um, he was picked up in mid-season draft. Gordon 113, tried his heart out today for the Swans. Uh, he's kicking inside 50, was uh, really good. Um, showed a bit of impact. Uh, so, yeah, we VC'd Merritt, just the 109. Um, yeah, had a really quiet fourth quarter. He was on the bench for quite a bit, so couldn't really make much of an influence. Could have pushed to a 120. Uh, Dawson, 81. So, yeah, unfortunately, he's concussed, so we'll miss next week. Yeah, he's on the bench for a majority of the final quarter, so probably this should have been 100. Uh, Jack Steele was brilliant with a 133. Um, yeah, I thought their midfield really dominated and put a number on the Eagles today. And uh, yeah, Steele's been good the last few games. Look at this. Four an average of probably what? 110 odd. Pretty good. We've held him all year long. So he's averaging 105 for the season. Pretty good. Tom Green's been in good form. 120, just another high accumulation game from him. Rosie saw that he went down with a cork or, or something like that, uh, but he said in the post, post match uh, press conference uh, that, uh, yeah, they just wanted to play it safe. So apparently he's a good chance for next week. Sarong was huge. Finally, we get a big score from Caleb because bloody hell, we trade him in and he just gives me 90s. We couldn't even get a ton out of him. Although I think we traded him, uh, traded him in in round 12. But yeah, it's nice to see him go big. It was his first 30 plus disposal game since round 10, I was seeing on Twitter actually. 
Uh, that was just, yeah, amazing. Uh, and Clayton Oliver got a 63. So, yeah, this is why we've been bad this year in fantasy. We still have plotters like Oliver. So I think he has to go. Could go Fisher, but the question is with Fisher, what forward do I trade in? So I think Oliver's more the important one. Cherry really got in debut with Gorn out. So, yeah, and it, also I brought him in because he has a really good run home. Cats, Tigers, toughy, but yeah, the Eagles should go well. The Dogs, usually Rucks go well against English with hitouts and them. Yeah, a bit of a, a tough one against the Hawks, but yeah, he's got a few easy ones there. English captain was very good. Um, yeah, Grant the wet. I thought he, I thought he stood up and um, he was able to float behind the ball and take some important intercept grabs. Flanders took the piss. Forty plus disposals for him. No two. So it's basically him with the keys in the midfield. Boss Anderson was getting tagged. Uh, Caldwell uh, could have been concussed, but he passed the test. But he had a rib problem. But apparently he's good for next week. But he's still been an awesome trade and really timed his trade well. We brought him in after his buy. And look at this run. Pretty excellent. Uh, Zorko was fantastic. I swear to God, he always plays well against Sydney. It's just, he, he, um, he always loves a big game, and uh, yeah, awesome. Uh, he was nullified a little bit in the second term, but yeah, just really controlled. Yeah, 12 marks. Controlled the, the football well uh, and made good decisions for the most part. Henny was a little bit quiet, uh, missed a few shots at goal, so that could have uh, that's, a, that's a big point swing miss there. Probably could have been a, a low 90, high 80 score, but yeah. Uh, yeah, last few weeks for Isaac, I know he got suspended and people say, oh, he's been robbed of brown. I don't think he was winning in any way. I think his post by run, he's dropped off a bit. Um, but still, uh, from a Sydney point of view, I thought he was really good at ground level today in, in, in the contest. So, I oh, thought he wasn't awful, but he hasn't really been able to um, really create as much space as he did in the first half and uh, show damage on the scoreboard. Uh, Dylan Moore with the 92, excellent, uh, as were the Hawks on Saturday. A complete team performance, and uh, yeah, always a, a treat to watch a player like Dylan Moore, especially when you own him in fantasy and super coach. And Zach Fisher was subbed out today. Uh, couldn't get a touch of it, or couldn't get near in the third term. He's keen, let him down. He was a liability defensively, I feel, felt too. So is he going to get um, dropped? If he is, then might just have to get rid um, and go with a forward rookie. I don't know. Maybe we just go with Sean Manor and Billy Dallin for F6 because they're probably a better option than Bloody Fisher. I might do that. Uh, so that's a team, really. Um, Frazier went well, but he's pretty much now maxed out. Humphrey's a bit of a quieter game, so it looks like he's hit the wall a little bit there. Uh, could have taken Dowling 75, but we went Fisher instead. So the trade's for round 20. I think we're finally going to get rid of Clayton Oliver. If Fisher's dropped, maybe we'll just punt him and then maybe... Um, move Manor into the forward line, and then we can put Taylor on the on the um, in the utility spot. But yeah, Frey just going to be the trade out of choice uh, because he's pretty much maxed out, forty five break even. But he's not going to hurt you. Might put out a few more seventies, but uh, I'd rather keep Shine Maker as a loop so we can use Logan's for that, uh, Logan Evans for that. Uh, and our promo choice, I'm going to bring in bring in Tom Stewart. He's been excellent um, ever since he's moved into the midfield. I think he moved in the midfield against the Blues, so lower score there. But look at this, last four weeks he's tunned up and he's looked excellent. He's actually a pretty good contested player. Like, he hunts the ball really well. So, yeah, he gets those contested posies. He gets, and he's also able to float behind the ball um, and take those marks. So, yeah, I, th I think Stuart's in really good form. Let's bring him in. 840k, still ex excellent value, and his three on average is 121. So, seems like a no-brainer, really. And when you look at the mids here, who would I go for in a as a mid? Like Bont, Trelaw, Trelaw was excellent, but he's 100k expensive. More 100k more. Butters is also also over 900k. I just think Stuart for 840 is a great price, so we can swing like Martin or Young or anybody uh, into the midfield here. Um, we'll just play them as an M8. Uh, but yeah, Dawson out. We're probably gonna have to loop on like a. Yeah, probably going to have to loop on just a score. I'll see the fixtures. But that's what it's looking like for, for fantasy for this round. Let's now move across to Supercoach. Okay, across now to Supercoach. And if you, Captain Lockie Neal or Zach Butters, like myself, you're always going to probably struggle a little bit this round unless you, uh, the rest of your team went really well. Uh, as for me, though, I got a 23.76 and, uh, yeah, Captain Butters. So that left a bit of a sour taste in the mouth. And, uh, yeah, we just couldn't really get... Too many ceiling scores like a lot of other people did. And we had a few low scores and poor performing premiums. So we go down nine spots, still hovering inside the top 500. So could we finish there? That would be pretty nice uh, for this year, given we've run out of trades. And yeah, just the, the five forced outs last week absolutely killed us. Uh, so let's now look at the team. Uh, as we said, yeah, Captain Butters, that's that's a bit of a stiff one. Uh, Coming up against Richmond with no Jack Graham, we thought he'd go well, but... 
Looks like he was carrying an injury. He was under an injury cloud or something with that shoulder. So, yeah, he was a bit proppy and wasn't uh, able to make too much of the, too much of an influence. Um, I guess for our sake, at least, Rosie didn't go off and have the final quarter off as a bit of a rest because he was looking like he was going to get 130. Uh, but, yeah, a bit of a back up captain's choice there. So lost out in maybe 20 points at least on merit. Uh, but looking through the team, yeah, we have to feel Dowling. So Gorn and McGovern are still out. Gorn apparently is going to be back next week, so Gorn will come in. Jackson goes forward. However, Dawson is going to be out um, with concussions, so we're probably going to have to move like a anybody of these mids, really, Heaney, Dowling, whatever, in the midfield. Gorn will come back. Jackson will cover. And, uh, yeah, we might not have a 23rd again. Don't know when McGovern's coming back, uh, but I think... Apart from injuries, we're all okay. So, uh, all okay. So, I think we survive another week. Hooray! I think that's just the most important thing. We can actually field 22 players. Uh, but anyway, she's all excellent. 138. Love him as a midfielder. I can also make impact forward of the ball. And yeah, as I said, I thought Dacos was pretty good with his disposal on, on Saturday. It wasn't a great performance at all from the pies, but um, yeah, held his head high. Jordan Clark, uh, very good again. But I actually crunched the numbers. If I traded in Whitfield instead of Clark after round 14, um, I would have had 215 more points. Yeah, just those sliding door moments can really hurt you. And look, everybody has their what could have been moments, which is yeah, fair enough. It swings and roundabouts, really. But it's one that one one that hurts you. And I could be higher if I went with Whitfield. But Clark, still excellent. I saw that goal he kicked, though. How about that? Um, he was just sprinting end-to-end -end and got the goal out the back. So, yeah, he's still been in really good form. Uh, Luke Ryan, just another flat 100 score, really. He has just his ceilings been evaporated, really, with less junk kicking and junk marks. Dan Houston with the 96. Uh, had a very good first half. His kicking was elite, slicing up in the middle of the park against the Tigers, but, um, yeah, tapered off a little bit in the second half, so no ceiling score from him. And Colby was pretty neat by foot today, so I'll definitely, definitely take a 94 looking quality as of late for the Kangas. Uh, midfield, Bontempelli, really good again. Um... Yeah, he's just impactful with his disposal. Hit some really good targets for the ball. So, could have been high, though, because he missed that goal directly in front. Uh, but I know a lot of people would have capped him in, so 122, you're happy with that. But, yeah, if you're like me, with, alongside the, what was it, like, I think it was like 30%, uh, Captain Butters in the top 1%, you wouldn't be happy chappy. Um, but it is what it is. I've, I've been pretty good with captains this year, so I was probably due for a stinker. And Zach Murray got a 108, and this, this one was a... A little bit annoying because he probably should have gone at least a 120 for this game, but quite fourth quarter again, most of it on the bench. Uh, Will Day we brought in last week. He got us a 95 or something uh, the previous week. And this week a 104. So he, I thought his game was excellent, but yeah, just couldn't get a ceiling score. And I was aware of this when bringing him in, but I just thought, why not? He's a, a great player to watch, but it's a bit infuriating when you bring him in instead of Ed Richards and he has a three-vote worthy performance and he went huge on Saturday night. So... Oh, well, could have went him, but uh, no, Day's still pretty quality. Um, how much money did we lose? 11 k Hooray. Uh, Tom Green with a 117. Much more better with his disposal on Saturday. He's packing the ball a little bit uh, as of late, but no, nah, much more better to, uh, on, on Saturday. Sarong, massive score. We're finally due for this. Um, excellent. Really good on the contested game. And now his link-up play was good. Kick the goal late. Sam Walsh with the 94. Yeah, just... Just these flat 90s and flat 100s he's getting as of late. Yeah, look at this. Bit of a thrown average is not good. Um, so he's a little bit out of form, but his third quarter was excellent. And he was carrying something a little bit, I think, as well. And yeah, Dawson definitely hurts too. Not only did he only get an 81, but he's going to be out next week. So needing Gorn to come back so we can put Jackson in the forward line, move Gorn here, and then we'll move one of these plays into the midfield to cover him. For the Rucks, and yeah, this hurt us this week. I know English and Cherry were excellent, so if you didn't own one of them, you're going to probably have a bit of a down week. So Grundy and Jackson weren't too great. I thought Grundy's clearances were pretty impactful, but still, I felt got well beaten by uh, Oscar McInerney. And as for Luke Jackson, looked pretty good, but um, yeah, he, he was rested a little bit. Uh, not rested, sorry. He came off with an injury, not exactly too sure what it was. Uh, but apparently they just, they just played it safe, which is definitely fair enough, so surely he's fine for next week. Sam Flanders, 128. Um, had a few poor turnovers throughout that game. Geez, Gold Coast were on ice all to watch. Just a lot of bad ball movement and terrible decision-making. Uh, so inefficient. But Flanders, just a ball magnet. Love his, he just got, he's just got a, such a great ticker and a great ability to find the ball. A great ability to find the ball. 
Jai Corwell with the flat turn. We'll definitely take it. But, um, yeah, shame about him getting uh, concussed. But I think he's okay. He passed the test and the ribs might hold up well. So hopefully he's good for next week. And Heaney, I think this is his lowest score of the year. Um, yeah, quite final quarter too. I think he was on around this score at three-quarter time. I had a quick look. And, uh, yeah, it couldn't make much of an impact. Four to the ball. This could have been a 90-odd um, if you kicked those goals. Uh, the chances he had. And, uh, yeah, Dane Zorko, really good game from him. Uh, had plenty of it in the back half. And Dylan Moore, excellent. Um, pushing and very pushing up the ground and making an impact all over. And, yeah, just such a unselfish player too. Uh, it was a, a complete team performance from the Hawks on Saturday. And Dowling will definitely take that in 83. Had a really productive final quarter. Got a lot of touches. Um, and, yeah, was key in their win of just supplying a lot more ball inside 50. And, uh, yeah, looks good on the wing there. I think him and, like, Zach Taylor have got some good youngsters that have been in good form. So that's it, really, for the Supercoach review. Um, yeah, no trades left, which sucks. Uh, maybe we could do a VC and see who we got. So, yeah, you can see that on your screens now. Quick VC and see. Um, Collingwood and Richmond. Mm. Maybe Dacos, but he's a little bit out of form, but maybe he's due for a good game. Frio and West Coast on the Saturday night. Maybe Sarong. Yeah, VC Sarong, possibly. Um, yeah, I think we'll do that for now. Maybe could uh, could go like Dunkley O'Neill for this Gold Coast matchup, because they've given up a bit of points to Suns to mids. Yeah, I'll probably just go strong in a day cost for now. Uh, let's have a quick look at the legs before we finish things up, shall we? Uh, we are sitting still second in my league. I'll definitely take it. Who got the highest score? So Mitch is still in first. 247 rank. I think that's around his spot from last week. Captain Butters too, which is a shame, but he got a 24-20. So yeah, English went big. Jay's name, Kervis, got subbed out. Shame if you owned him. Uh, that's rough. Uh, Kerno, big. Kick five goals or four goals, I'm pretty sure. So... Yeah, he was really, really good, uh, especially in the second half. Key to their win. Uh, Nick Martin, sort of lowish score. Ridley, big. So, yeah, he had Logan Evans, too. Shame he couldn't loop him on. Uh, but uh, still a pretty good score for Mitch, uh, looking like he held rank. And as for the highest point scored this week, do we have any big ones? Oh, yes, we did. DP, deep is 25, 67, 2,000, So he's flying up the ranks for sure. Um, so, yeah, Jack Sinclair, really smart VC choice, eh? Um, excellent against West Coast. Um, Stewart, excellent. Bont, Caldwell, Green. Uh, he took Dacos. He's got McKercher as a 20-30, if you don't mind. That's very nice. So, hey, look at this. His team's looking pretty schmick. He's got cover for Dowling. With Dowling, he's got cover with uh, McKercher and also Dacos. So, he could finish well here, uh, DP Deepers. And now across to my fantasy leagues to finish things up. Uh, we still have Emmett G, 540. So, did he go up this week? Or did he go down? Okay, he went up ranks this week. So still on the push for at least maybe top 500, which is, yeah, definitely a great achievement for himself. 24-44, big round from him. Captain English, VC Caldwell, very schmicky. Had Fisher too, so definitely good score. Oh, he, but he put the loop on Manor. That's a shame. Uh, looking in the midfield, Dawson Walsh under 100. But yeah, wow, with that law, really nice trade in this week. Amazing. Did the live watch along on Saturday night, and he was quality. Uh, Stewart, excellent. So, yeah, bringing him in this week. And, uh, yeah, Jordan Clark also uh, was pretty good, but just didn't really get many marks, so he couldn't get 100. Uh, but, yeah, really good stuff from uh, Emmett. Hopefully he can push into the top 500. And could he make the push from a hat? Maybe time is going to run out for him. But that's pretty much it for the Supercoach and Fantasy Review, lads. Uh, let me know how you like to go in down below in the comments. Who are you going to be bringing in this week? Always love to answer some of your questions. And that's pretty much it from me, everybody. Thank you very much for tuning in. And until next time, I will talk to you later. See you later, fellas.